Yeah, okay. Explain to me what you're doing. I'm just doing it. Because they said they didn't want no uh, free advertising. What, who said that? We don't care. You can eat Skittles and Starbucks on camera. Is that, that's really what you got going here? You got three different types of candy and three different cups? Nah, oh, one no, of them's one? Gatorade. Gatorade? Yeah. So you got to like make sure you get maximum sugar intake early in the morning, huh? All, at all times. Are you like a sugar fiend like that? Nah, I just... It's just today? I'm a sweet tooth. I can't cap. How old are you? 28. 28. Damn, bro. I used to be a, a sugar fiend, but I was I always like... Mostly consume sugar at night. At night? Yeah. Why is that? It just feels like that's the time to do some some ill. You know, you don't go to strip club at noon. <laughs> you go to strip club late at night, right? Yeah. So I feel the same way about like ice cream and candy and stuff. You gotta keep it in the dark. It's just like that part of my personality gets activated. I feel like that about sex too. <laughs> You can have sex when you just wake up, but it's not really like... It's like, not like a... It's fun because it's, it's like out of the ordinary. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. a vibe. It's like different, different angle. I feel that. Nighttime is where it's at. Yeah. Nighttime's the right time. That's what they always say. I'm definitely a... What's it called? A night person. You are. You're a night owl. Nah, I ain't no night owl. You ain't an owl? I'm a night owl killer. <laughs> is that a thing? Yeah. As soon as it came out of my mouth, I was like... He's got to beef with the owls, whoever the owls are. The night owls, actually. That's really what it's called. There's another hood called the night owls, and I just randomly brought them nah, up. but we can't. Oh, I ain't okay. talking about it. I'm not going to. Yeah, no, no op talk. Um, but, okay, what, what time do you normally wake up in the morning? Average day. Um, like five. Five in the morning? Yeah. Is that, like, something you learned uh, while you were locked up, or has that always been how nah, you were? I just, we're out, me and, me and my wife, we're out the door by six, you know? I live, I live kind of far from where I work. Okay. Or from where she works. Can you, is his mic all the way up? Because it feels low in my headphones. Just, just a question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess when you got the, the work thing going on, you got to force yourself to be that person. But, like, if you, if you didn't have to work, what time would you be waking up on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, uh, if I didn't have to work? Uh, probably like 7.30 or 8. Yeah. The older you get, the more that, that just seems like the move. Like really successful people? Uh, I just, I feel like when I sleep all the way into the day, I feel like like a day. Right. You know what I mean? I feel like, like scumbag or something. But when I look at all my rapper friends slash, you know, trapper friends, it's like they wake up late and then they stay out late. Yeah. Whereas for me... If I'm still out at like two o'clock in the morning, it just feels wrong. No, nah, like, it don't matter what. I'm I'm up late every single day. I don't sleep until at least two. Really? Yeah. So you can get by on like two, three hours of sleep. Yeah. I guess I'm still young or whatever. You are. It might still be young. all the sugar. It might be all the sugar. It might be some other stuff. No. Nah. No. <laughs> because let me tell you, staying out till six, seven in the morning when I used to snort. When I stay out till no that, problem. when I stay out till that time, I'll be I'll be I'll be burnt. I definitely have to take a nap. Oh really? Yeah. But see, I don't I don't have no problem with taking a nap in the middle of the day. Me neither. I love it. Yeah, I'll take a nap. When my kid goes down for the nap, I'm on it. Hell Sneak yeah. Sneak off. Sleep or when for a we're half driving, hour. like when we're driving, you know, either I'm driving or if my wife's driving, I'll sleep mm. for sure. That's like a real test of who you are as a person, though. If you can sleep like while you're sitting up and the car's shaking and sh that's a real test of how sleepy you are. Yeah, I I sleep well in the car. Mm. Yeah, so certain people can just sleep in whatever condition, and then like certain people, this you can't sleep at all unless you just find yourself in like a perfect scenario, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, I have friends who can pass out, like, easily in a room full of people while everybody's talking and hanging out. Yeah. And I don't know if yeah. I got that in me. I, I could do that, but, like, see, I know what, you, I know what you're talking about because my little brother, he cannot sleep unless he's like, man, I need a blanket, I need a pillow, you got some shorts. Like, you know what I mean? He can't. <laughs> I'll just knock out, like, all my clothes on your couch, like, nothing. Okay, but that's how I feel about sleeping, like, your actual sleep at night. Having to sleep on the, the leather couch, fully clothed, you got your jeans on. Oh, my God. That's the worst. I feel disgusting. I need to brush <laughs> my teeth. I need to be able to actually, like, have a blanket and shit. can't be, like, wrapped up inside my hoodie in this, at this point in my life. Nah, I, I could sleep. If I'm tired, I'm going to sleep. Mm. 
Okay. I'm glad we got all that established. Um, so if you couldn't tell, we're in here with Rowdy Racks today. Yeah, I'm Rowdy Racks. Nice to meet y'all. So I found out about you because when I was doing the Lefty interview, people trying to hype up any sort of tension or conflict between you and him. Yeah. And as soon as I hear that, I'm like, all right, I got to check out the ops. Head on over to YouTube. I started searching your stuff, and I was very, very ops. impressed. We ain't ops, bro. It's like fake ops. It's like, uh, it's just, it's not, we're not ops. I just can't with them like that, you know? Mm. Like, I just can't be like real, real buddy, buddy with them, you know? But I'll f with them. Right. On some music. Yeah. So you can have a show with them, and it's yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah. I can have a set studio session with them and all that. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just I can't be like, oh, taking pictures with him. And all. The picture yeah. is a big thing. He he doesn't get along with somebody I'm close to. Right. You know what I mean? So just based on the loyalty that I got, you know, I've got to keep him at arm's distance. Even all the clips from all these different YouTube channels about you and him, I'm looking at them and I'm like, this is kind of a stretch because you guys are like barely saying anything about each other. He's yeah. like showing respect. The worst thing you said was basically like, I can't really f with him like that, slash, I think I'm better at rapping. That barely even qualifies as like beef to me. Like, yeah, that's I, pretty respectful. I know him better. But um, yeah, fool, I ain't tripping off of that fool. I ain't beefing on him. Mm. You know what I mean? But respect to you for being able to kind of like avoid or, you know, stop yourself from even jumping off the deep end and like using it for content because that's what a huge percentage of rappers would do at this point is like oh somebody that i like kind of sort of don't get along with is starting to pop off i'm on this song yeah, instagram post you know see, the thing is like i said in a couple other uh interviews or whatever like it matters to me how i get there you know what i mean i know i'm going to the top i know i'm going to get there that's for sure mm. you know what i mean i know that but it matters to me how i get there i'm not just gonna do something stupid on the internet to go viral or like, you know, say some dumb on no jumper so mm. I can go viral. Like, nah, you know what I mean? My music is hard. You know what I mean? So like, I'm going to get there from my talent and my skills. You know what I'm saying? My personality. Mm. You feel me? Like, I'm not going to be like, Oh, let these boom right there. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go diss on that ride his wave. Like, nah, I'm straight off all that fool. You know? Yeah. Cause like as a rapper, you're building this sort of long-term image for yourself. And these little tiny things of just looking a little bit too clout chasey or whatever can really like, change like how even the public just the views you. The simple fact that that oh I'm on like you heard you heard of me because of lefty I'm kind of like, like you know what I mean like that's just kind of like it's not the ideal way that you'd want yeah people like me to find out about you yeah no I respect that for sure and you seem like a very uh, principled person in general too because like even the fact that when you're talking about the jail. You're just like, you know, that's that's how I was taught, is that I'm not going to talk about shit that happened in there. Well, we're not supposed to. Right. I know a lot of people do, and like, like certain people are talking about it, but, he, like, you know, you like if you're one of my people, like, you know what I mean, if you're a South Sider, like, you know you ain't supposed to be talking about this. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just, you're not supposed to. Right. But is that some where you could be in hot water if you f*** up, or is it just how people kind of expect you to behave i mean the people who i mean if you know about it if you know then you're supposed to know you know what i'm saying like like us i know whether or not it could put me in hot water mm -hmm. you know what i mean because i'm supposed to know you know what i mean but i can't share that to the whole world even whether it would get you in hot water is kind of like a little too much to share with yeah, the public see like, i respect that you feel me that's, that's like, like our business like that's how it's supposed to be, I'm assuming, in terms of any kind of gang, criminal, whatever. But it is pretty wild when you look at the internet these days and just see how much of that is out the window, both in terms of people like literally snitching on themselves and getting themselves locked up, not to mention just putting shit on blast that really doesn't need to be put on blast. It's not like the point now where when somebody, when I see people exercising discretion and not airing out street beefs or who they have problems with, et cetera, it's like I'm very impressed and that shouldn't really be something that's impressive. Yeah, it should be normal. Yeah. It should be the norm, but it's not. But Yeah. It is what it is, though, you know? Game's changed a lot. So tell me a little bit about uh, the young Rowdy Racks. Oh, shit. Your upbringing, what it was like as a child, everything like that. Oh, as a kid, I mean, shit, it was smooth. I, um, I was raised by good-ass people, you know what I mean? But at the same time, like, 
like okay my mom's side of the family mexican catholic like like you know real good people okay very decent well-mannered good people you know and my dad's side of the family also decent well-mannered good people but they're all gang members mm. you know what i mean they're all gang members and then uh well, everything that comes with that, you know what I mean? The jail, police raids, mm. you know, jail, you know, house getting shot up, all that type. So your mom was a saint and then your dad was no. in the streets? No. Not a saint. No, my mom was a hustler. Mm. But her mom and her grandma and, you know, all like our fam her family, they're pretty much, you know, saints. You know mm. what I mean? Interesting. And so how hard did they go in trying to keep you away from the bad side? Um, I mean, they didn't really go hard in like trying to keep me away from the bad side like that, because that would be pretty much keeping me away from my dad's family. You know, mm. they can't, you know, they just went hard on teaching me right from wrong. You know what I mean? And whatever, whatever I choose, they left that up to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Interesting. So, if, if you have kids yet? Yeah. How I have many? Twins. Twins. And they're how old? Three, four. Holy shit. A three year old, too. It's a wild. They're four. Wild moment. My kid just had her first ballet recital. Really? Mind blowing. That was dope, huh? Just like, I don't know. I'm in, the, I'm in this room. I can't wait till I see my girls doing stuff like that. Dude. And I'm at the ballet recital and I see a dude who the last time I saw him, I punched him in the face in a bar in like 2012 <laughs> and i see him at the ballet recital and i'm just like oh my god like I, part of me wants to go like apologize because i'm like 1000 percent in the wrong yeah it was over a and it's like the least gangster like i was just straight up coked out of my mind in the bar and just seen him with my like no. the day after she stopped with me and i just had to start swinging off top Ugh. but i look back at that like bro that's the weakest i ever did yep Instead of just paying it, paying her no mind, showing her no, you know what I mean? Chalk it up to the game. Not giving her that uh, satisfaction of seeing you react. I mean, she's the only one who deserved anything. Obviously, you can't Should beat the girl. Should have her up. in the face. <laughs> 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 that didn't occur to me. Thank God I didn't do that. That would have been way worse. Yeah. Damn. Uh, but, yeah, so, okay, you, like, how you view how you would raise your kid in comparison to how you were raised would you go harder than your parents went to keep your kid away from uh, criminal activity and whatnot? Um, definitely not. But see, the thing is, like, I was exposed to it. Okay, like, the the way I grew up and the way I was raised, I like it. You know what I mean? I, I agree with it low-key. You know, the, yeah, I was exposed to a lot of negative stuff, but mm -hmm. it was my choice to participate. You know what I mean? You expose you don't it's not exposing your kids more than than like sh just showing it to them you know what i mean it's the same thing but it's actually different you know you don't you're not you're not exposing it to them and, and making that their environment you know what i mean like that wasn't my environment you mm -hmm. know i wasn't surrounded by it all everywhere i go but if i go to my dad's side of the family i would see it and i would know what that you know they would tell me you know this is what's going you know what i mean this is what it is you know what i mean right if you but this isn't for you Mm. That's what they're always telling me. This is not what you do. This is what we do. This is not your type of lifestyle. This is not what you're going to do. You know what I mean? Which is wrong because at the end of the day, I ended up liking it. You know mm. what I'm saying? I like being over there with them and seeing what they're doing. You know, my kids, they're not going to be around that type of, shit, you know, mm. but they're going to obviously want to know who their family is, what their parents are like, you know? Because it's one thing to try to keep your kids away from street gang, shit, whatever. It's another thing if like every significant male role model in their life basically fits into the same box of like this type of dude it's not like you know if your parents are scientists in you know simi valley or something and i mean i guess you're just not gonna you're not gonna have a reason to, to find that attractive yeah, yeah but see the thing is the thing is what you got you got to teach them to like good things you know mm -hmm. what i mean like if they see bad things and they don't like it then they're, they're probably not going to want to be like that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you got to teach them. You got to make sure what they like is positive. You right. know what I'm saying? And then they'll be all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like trippy for me even to have my kid talking to fucking Crip Mac on FaceTime and shit. Cause my kid's three, so obviously she, funny. she's a far way away from being able to even kind of understand. 
But also for me, it's like I would really love to make it like deep into your life before I explain anything about anyone who's a gang member or doing any kind of crime or whatever. Like, but at the same time, like, I don't know. She comes to my store and stuff and she starts meeting like my crazy ass friends at a certain point. It's just going to be questions I have to start answering. Yeah. And, and you're not going to be like, oh, no, don't talk to him. Like, you know what I mean? Exactly. How rude and disrespectful is that? You know, mm. you, you got to understand everybody's. We're all people, you know what I'm saying? So, like, like okay, my kids, like, I, I do feel kind of, like, iffy or, like, shaky when they say, oh, what's that? What is that? Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, tatted and shit, like, nothing. That's nothing. Don't worry about that. You know, eventually I might have to tell them what it is, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. right but, now. But then at least you'll be the kind of dad who didn't glorify it, didn't, like, did exactly. what he could to not make it a thing. Now, see, obviously, exactly. at a certain point, that, they're going to figure where, it out, but... You're exactly right, and that's the word I was looking for. See, when I would go around my family, they glor they were glorifying that mm. shit. All my older cousins, like, you know what I mean, tatted up, fresh out of prison, like, you know what I mean? They, like, definitely glorified it and made mm. it like a... They idolized it, you know what I mean? Because you see with your kids how everything you do is so unbelievably influential to them. Mm-hmm. I see my kid just going, Siri, give me five more minutes. Because she hears my girl like post postponing the alarm and shit. Yeah. My kid has no idea what that means. And she's saying it like it's just some cool shit to say. That's why that's why I'm so happy that I uh, transitioned into this music. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like every time I'm with my girls, we're just like, I'm like, oh, you want to be a singer like your dad? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's, it's not, a, not all of my homies have something positive they could. Even if your life has multiple sides to it. You, it's good to have one side of it that you can just share with them and shit like that. Mm -hmm. My kid knows what a podcast is. My kid knows that That's when cool. I go to work, I'm sitting down and I'm doing podcasts and that she can like, she can't listen to it, but she can see it on the TV. That's dope. So, okay, you're you're just a young dude. What were you like throughout uh, elementary and high school, shit like that? Elementary school, I was a good ass kid. Mm. Straight A's. Hold on. Mm. I was in all advanced placement classes, AP classes. You know what I mean? When I was in first grade, they wanted to move me to third grade. When I was in third grade, they wanted to move me to fifth grade. Wow. And um, I was excited about that shit, you know what I mean? I tell my mom, like, yeah, I want to go over there, you know, with the big kids and shit. This work is like, this workbook is too easy for me and this, this, and that. My mom's like, nope. Trust me, you're going to thank me. I'm like, why, mom? Like, why I want to go to fifth grade already? No, nah, I'm not going to do that. Trust me, you'll thank me. And then when I was in fifth grade, I was like, what? You know, I actually asked her, like, hey, mom, how come you didn't let me uh, skip grades and shit? She's like, because, man, when you get to high school, all the girls going to be older than you. Mm. And I was like, good shit, mom. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> no, as soon as you started saying that, I was thinking, like, damn, if you have your fifth grader around all seventh graders or eighth graders or whatever, it's probably, I mean, it could be good because they're like, from a school perspective, you're learning yeah, faster and stuff, but also like, I mean, kids start doing drugs, start smoking, start hooking you gotta up. You think about it as from a real life perspective, you know what yeah. I mean? That's what my, that's why my mom's, she always looks at everything from a real life perspective, you know what I'm saying? Mm. My mom's the shit. Definitely. But so you never moved up in grade, but so what, what was, uh, was there a certain point where you kind of stopped being as serious about school and stuff? Yup. When was that? Fifth grade. See, yeah. after fifth grade, it was like uh, I started kicking in with homies that were like doing dumb shit, you know what I mean? It was fun. I liked it. Mm. And that's when I started changing. Like, you know, I would still do all, like ace all my tests, but I wouldn't do the work. Mm. You know what I mean? And it, shit just started changing. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, when I heard you say that in another interview that like you could just not try and do super good in school, I was like, damn, that was like not me. Like I had to go so hard to get decent grades in school. It just didn't really work for me to be able to just remember a bunch of shit about different wars and how to do math and all this kind of shit. Like it was just like, like pulling teeth for me to get That's that crazy. shit. Well, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I don't know why I'm so blessed like that, but you know. It is. It's true. Like, that shit's just easy. A lot of things come easy to me, like, come natural to me. You know what I mean? Mm. And I appreciate that. Definitely thank God for that. I know it's a blessing. I hope, hopefully, it passes on to my kids. You know what I mean? But it seems like <laughs> cause they're fucking smart. Yeah, definitely. They're smart as fuck. Kids nowadays, period, are smart as fuck. Mm, that's one thing 
that's kind of crazy to realize is like your kids almost can't really be smarter than you because they get everything from you. So unless they're getting like serious influence from other places, realistically, your kid's ceiling of like intelligence and the type of shit that they are into and talk about, it's kind of like capped with you. And it, the, the thing that made me think of that was like, I used to see this girl and she would come back and just be talking about like some, some science shit that she read in a magazine about, or biology, whatever. And I'm just thinking like, holy fuck, like, I can't even hang in this conversation at all. Like my parents didn't bring up, my parents were talking to me about like the news or like what's going on in politics, shit like that sometimes once in a while, but not really like, like, I don't know. It's just, it feels like there's this kind of like a limit, like you're, See, I, you're like, setting the standard. I used to, uh, like I passed my parents for like a long time ago. You mm. know, my mom was the only one who could like low key hang with me when it comes to like school shit or like, you know, just intelligent shit. You know what I mean? But like I could, I passed them up quick. Really? Yeah, I was pretty smart, bro. So you're hanging out in the streets and everything. Are you also thinking about rap at this point, or is that not in your yeah, mind at all? See, when I when I was hanging out in the streets, pretty much middle school, when I started banging and all that shit, no other type of career or nothing like that was even a thought in my head. I was mm -hmm. going to be a gang member for life, you know what I mean? I put that shit in my head. I, I Everything that came with it, like, you know what I mean? If I get busted, if I get caught up for life, well, fuck it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I just, man, I used to think crazy. When I was younger, I used to be a crazy-ass kid, bro. I started. Yeah. I mean, that is kind of wild when you think about the fact that that makes sense to so many young kids. Like, you know, when I look back at my life, if, I, if somebody had exposed me to, like, gang shit when I was, like, 16, I probably would have been all in. I'm lucky as fuck that I didn't get exposed to that shit. I'm lucky as fuck to even be here right now because mm. of the way I, okay, the way I was thinking and the way I was, like, running around in the streets, the things I was doing and shit is, like, crazy, bro, like, crazy, crazy. You feel like you got, like, a second lease on life because you took so many chances and did so many things that were supposed to get you locked up or... But see, that's what I know. See, I used to, when I would, like, get away with something or or not get hurt when people are shooting at me or like just right. you feel invincible bunch of the close calls i used to feel invincible i used to feel like i'm super elite gang member warrior nobody could touch me you know the cops don't got shit on me but after a while there was things that would happen where i'd be like okay no god prevented something from happening for me something there must be something you know what i mean there has to be a reason mm. you know what i mean and then when this shit came around i was like oh this is what it was like right you know what i mean this is what i'm made for god god protected me so that i could find this but when you're like house is getting shot up when you're super young i mean what does that do to your brain because that's gotta like kind of give you the idea of oh there are bad guys there's guys that we have issues with and i'm might be because i'm super young i might not really know the details of exactly how all this shit works but there's people who want bad things to happen to us that's got to have a big effect on a young kid um i guess it does but i not i don't really know i never really noticed the effects because it's been happening mm. you know my whole life you know what i mean the, i never noticed the change because it's just i've been trained and like uh um like my skills have been honed into this shit you know what i mean like i've been known that shit since the jump since we we're little you mm -hmm. know what i mean that this is us then that's them there's people that want us and we want them but most of the time we get them way more than they get us you know that's what was always put into my head you know by my older cousins and, and just the members you know what i mean mm -hmm. that we're far more elite than them you know yeah. what i'm saying and and if you have that in your head and then you you're training your skills and you're honing your skills and you're then it just it ends up becoming true homie. you know mm -hmm. what i mean you end up becoming a higher tier than the rest of the people around you this is crazy because somebody like you like now you're raising kids and you're gonna like try to teach them diligently i would assume that that shit doesn't matter and especially like if you become like really really successful as a rapper it's gonna be even more extreme where you're gonna be like, I'm a fucking millionaire. Like, uh, the last thing I want is for my kid to think that he has to carry on this tradition. Nah, but then know. at the same time, I know you got that shit in your heart, you know? And there's a big party that can't forget about things people have done to you or your friends and shit like that. And not to mention like the pride of this shit that you've been associated with most of your life. There's never, I could never, 
I could never, homie. You know what I mean? Before I was Rowdy Rax, I was who I, you know, I am who I am, dog. You know what I mean? Every, everywhere I go, I'm the same person. You know what I'm saying? There, even though now I might be getting a little bit of success, tasting a little bit of fame, but that shit, none of this shit means nothing to me. You know what I mean? Like, like I t even, and I can't, I don't even like to say too much because I know I'm on camera, homie, but anybody that denies me or, or doubts me that, that I'm not who I say I am, they could come try me. I'm mm. good. I'll, I'll throw this shit away real quick. Right. I mean, that pride, like, you know, that's something that kind of makes you pride. who you are, it's right? It's just, it's just, it's just, um, I don't know what, I don't know what the word is. It's not even pride, though. It's just who I am. I mean, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a respecting, homie. You know what mm. I mean? It's just, I don't come around disrespecting people. Even, even, okay, now, before when I was young, I used to really be out looking for people who I was beefing it with, mm -hmm. trying to get them. You know what I mean? Now I'm not even tripping off of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll walk into a liquor store or whatever, any type of store. If somebody walks by me all tatted up, hey, what's up? How you doing? I'll keep it pushing, dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I won't even ask them who they are or where they're from. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that I'm on that level, when motherfuckers ask me, I trip. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Where you from? What? I trip hard because it's like, homie, I... You don't fucking, you don't want to, you don't want to go there with me, dog. You right. know what I mean? Because I don't fucking, I'm not going to sit here and fight with you and none of that bullshit. I mean, it's going to fucking be some shit. You know what I'm saying? So now, and before I used to trip on everything, I'm checking all that shit. I see somebody tatted up. I'm asking them exactly, what's up? Where you, where you from? I mean, you know what I mean? But now I'm not sweating that. I'll, I'll go on about my business if you go on about yours. You know what I'm saying? Mm, definitely, yeah. And the older you get, the more and more that you just kind of like and the more successful you get the more and more you're just gonna kind of over time just have to sort of but let see, that shit here, go bit I mean, by bit i don't know how it is in other states but over here in california it's they don't even you don't even have to be a gang member it's mm. just motherfuckers just that'll trip just because i don't know i don't even know they're just weird or whatever motherfuckers are just like that you know what i mean like like i said i don't hit up people or trip on nobody but I'll be damned if I'm gonna let a motherfucker stare at me or stare at my wife or none. Of, you know what I'm saying? Mm. None of that. It's a respect thing, just because like I said. You're in a fucked up situation where you have all this potential right now, and like, who knows what your life could be like a year or two from now? But then, meanwhile, you could very easily end up in a fucking liquor store standoff situation with somebody who literally has nothing, nothing. to lose. Yeah. And for him, going to jail actually doesn't sound that bad. See, but to me. Okay, like, that's why I keep the people around me who I keep around me, you mm. know what I mean? I keep certain friends around me, and, and my wife especially, mm. because they're the ones that think about, I don't think about not, none of that shit that you just talked about. I don't think about none of that shit, mm. about what I could be in a few years. Or, I don't think about none of that shit. Your I, wife will very rarely lead you wrong, right? No, yeah, she's the, they're the ones that are like, hey, you know, Rowdy, like, Right. It's not you know what I mean. You got this and that going on, and I'm like, man, because I don't like I said, fool, I don't sweat none of that shit. This little uh, AP watch or anything, this diamond ring, all of this shit means nothing to me, huh? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Fame, none, it, I don't really give a fuck about none of it. You know what I mean? I grew up from the same way I was when I was younger. I still think the exact same way. All my dead homies and people that I represent, people that I that have lived for this shit, died for this shit. It's a, all that I think about, homie. That's the that's where I'm coming from. You know mm. what I mean? Anybody disrespects me or something, I'm gonna take it straight to the full to the fullest extent. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck about none of this rap shit, this career, nothing. Like, even though I should, mm. so, but see, and then afterwards, I do. You know what I mean? After what I'm best believe when I'm sitting in the back of that a cop car or something, I'm like, fuck. Mm. You know what I mean? My fucking album. Like, trust me, I do. But the first initial. Hell no. Nah. It's not even a thought in my head. Because when I'm even seeing the videos of you from like three, four years ago, it feels like a little bit different level of energy. I mean, I was nuts. <laughs> I was nuts. See, but that's a that's the thing. Like, it's a, around that time, I was still in my ways, lost in my ways. I was off of drugs, tripping off of people, set tripping and all that shit. But mm. So now it's it's gradually changing, you know what I mean? But like I said, if I have an encounter with somebody – Immediately, I'm not thinking about nothing like that. Even like, well, all my kids and like, you know what I mean? That's why it's like, 
what I used to, my kids used to roll around with me and shit. I'll tell my baby mama, like, you got to, you got, everybody, you got to be the one to watch and shit. You know what I mean? You got to be the one to calm me down or whatever because I'm not going to do that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I don't, I don't mean, I don't play about that shit. And I guess that's just because of the way I, there were when I was young. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? My family, my dad and my cousins and shit, like, yeah, we got the kids in the car. You seen your dad have like a road rage incident? What? <laughs> <laughs> my dad was chasing this. Okay. My dad had got into it with the, one of his enemies and shit. I'm in the car seat as a baby. You know, my mom's telling him, stop, motherfucker. My dad's chasing this fool, ramming his car. Boom, boom. Trying to kill him and shit. You know what I mean? Wow. Because that his, that's just the way he was fucking. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm well, the way his parents were when he was young and shit, like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's, it's a very fucking, very fucked up situation, dog, when, when you got, when you're living with somebody who's like that, you know? I was reading an article about a guy who ended up getting, like, life or some shit because he gets in a fucking shootout on the highway and ends up killing the kid that was in the fucking car seat of his enemy's car or whatever. And I remember reading that, and I'm, I'm glad that I'm 40 years old because I read that, and I was like, you know what? If I ever end up in a situation that's even close to that, I'm going to be a total fucking bitch and I'm going to get my ass out of there and just drive away and not Dude, try to stand on I, nothing. Like I will do whatever ho ass shit I need to do. And hey, maybe, maybe if it comes down to it, you could clean it up at some point, like, you know, take care of it a different way. But when it comes to my kid being involved, whatever. You you take my pride, throw it in the fucking garbage can. I'll do whatever to be able to like make sure See, that that's my why, kid's safe. That's why know? I keep the people around me who I do. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I keep my manager ultra with me. I keep my wife with me because they they're the ones that are gonna tell me like you know check it out. It's not that important right now. You know, and I'll argue with them like nah fuck that. You know, but no, you know at the end of the day I listen to them because they're the ones that are thinking right and I'm not. Mm -hmm. I know that. You know what I mean? I know the way I am. It's not right. You know what I'm saying? So when, when did you start getting locked up, though, when you were uh, younger? How old were you? Thirteen. Thirteen. What was that charge? It was um, possession of vandalism tools, vandalizing, and uh, burglary tools, I think. You were in graffiti? Or? Yeah, I was hitting up the hood and shit like that. And mm -hmm. then uh, I just got right back out on house arrest. And then 15 is when I went to jail and, like, did time and shit mm -hmm. for a gun. For a gun. And... How did that change you? How did how did it impact you? I liked it. Really? Fuck yeah. See, that's what I was saying about the guy in the liquor store with nothing to lose. You were him at one point. Hell yeah, I was. Mm. Hell yeah, I was. Definitely was. What was it about the jail environment that was fun to you? It was just, a, okay, as a kid, it's like you, you're, we're all, it's a whole facility full of juvenile delinquents, you know what I mean? Mm. Everybody's banging their hood. They want to make their hood fucking like, you know what I mean? Like. Okay, I'm in, I come into the unit, it's like, Puente is here. You know what I mean? Puente is in the house. Ballista's here. I'm going to show them how we do it. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's pretty much why I liked it so much. Definitely. So in the, the jail situation for you, it's like everybody's gangs matter a lot, but then once you get to prison and shit, that, that stuff matters less? Nah, I'm talking about as a kid. Right, because in the juvenile, juvenile shit, hall, it's got to be really cracking, juvenile, right? Yeah, juvenile hall, it ain't no oh fucking... There ain't no rules, you mm. know what I'm saying? Definitely. So, okay, like, uh, at what point during all of this do you start to think about the rap shit? Okay, I made I made a few songs in Juvenile Hall. I was rapping, but I never thought about it as a career, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just thought, like, I would make some songs that I could bump, me and my homies could bump in the hood and shit, you know? But when I when I became an adult, and I did a, a prison term, and, and homies were telling me, like, fool, your shit's hard, like, mm. You could make some money, fool. And I'm like, nah, you think so? Like, yeah, right, we'll see. Then I met my manager through my through my homegirl from the hood. And I seen I seen his other artists, like King Most Wanted and shit, that, that he was making, he was getting them popping, like making them money. I was like, oh, shit. Like, right, you speak super highly of the, the Ocho guy. And like, yes, man. like, you would not be where you're at career-wise if it wasn't for him? Hell no. That fool's done, that fool, that fool's done a lot for me, dog. He's, he's, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't give a fuck about my life still. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's that's pretty much how I, that's where I was at, dog. You know when when you're when you don't care about your life, how are you gonna care about somebody else's life? So, what I did not give a fuck about my life. That man maybe 
give a fuck about my he showed me that my life could actually be something worth giving a fuck about you know that's dope and then not only was he telling me about it he was showing me you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying and that's what changed it a lot that's that's probably why i'm think why you see the difference in the videos and shit like mm-hmm. you know what i mean that's probably where i'm at right now because of him for sure right when did you start getting into drugs young 13 just smoking weed or what are you, what are you on hardcore drugs yeah, because so so smoking scanty, that's like <laughs> meth. Yeah. And is that like really common where you're coming from? Um Cause I read it, about a million comments saying that that's what Lefty's doing too. <laughs> Not to put any smut on anybody's I can't name. Speak on the, I can't speak on what he's doing, but but I mean, it's common in the in the groups of people that I was with, mm. hanging around with, you know what I mean? But in the main regular society nah but see i'm i I live in a world that's not part of the main regular society Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying there's a whole nother society that a lot of people don't know about right you know what i'm saying that's that's the world that i live in yeah i mean that's true but i'm starting to see that like i'm starting to transition into the real world you know what i'm saying and that's why like that's why I'm not gonna jump on these podcasts and talk about oh whoop de whoop like nah homie it's, it, you gotta think about what you're saying dog mm. you know what I mean like that's why I, I mean I'm not gonna I ain't sitting I'm not gonna smut nobody up homie like you know what I'm saying but how are you not gonna have everybody talking about you doing meth when you're gonna jump on a podcast like yeah I'm doing meth like homie. <laughs> It's ridiculous, dog. But it, I mean, is is that the kind of shit that's like is just viewed as like too fucked up that nobody really wants to talk about it? Because a lot of fucking people do coke, and very few people will ever discuss it on a podcast yeah, until it's that, in past. That's tense. not something that you. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's not something that you openly. Oh yeah, I fucking come on, dog. That's like, what type of you gotta have some type of respect for your morals, like standards, homie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? can't be up on the fucking podcast talking about you doing drugs. Like, what's up with you? Because, you know, I realized pretty early on with the podcast shit, because I was doing coke, but I was like, kind of on some regular shit. Like, oh, we go out to the bar, we're going to drink, we're going to do some coke, whatever. But I realized really quickly that if I mentioned it at all on the podcast, that a huge percentage of the audience is going to think, oh, he's a cokehead. He's like full blown, does it every day, does it all day. And certain drugs are just like that. Like if you if you told me that you did heroin once in a while, I mean they're they're not gonna hear the once in a while. They're like, oh, he's a heroin addict. Like, yeah, it's just it, realistically, most people who do heroin, I would assume that they yeah. are pretty goddamn Same addicted thing to with it. Meth. Yeah. Same thing with meth. That's just like that. That's it. If you do meth, you know you're a tweaker. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's not a cool drug. You know what I mean? It's not like oh, you're sipping lean or fucking nah, dog. You see the fucking posters of the tweakers on me? Like that shit's not. I mean, any drug, though. I mean, you know, you don't sit there and that that's your business, homie. You know what I mean? You, that's your, you do that shit like, I don't know, especially in prison, you learn how to keep your shit like, you don't go and broadcast what you're doing on the tier, homie. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You go do that shit in your cell phone, come out and program. You know, you don't fucking, so you learn that shit in there, you should be the same way in here. Mm-hmm. Out, out here, I mean, you know what I mean? If you do that shit, you do that shit on your own time, homie, you don't fucking... Let the whole world know about it, homie. That shit ain't cool. Yeah, because meth has image issues. Because every time that you drive by a fucking homeless encampment or you drive through downtown and you see all these crazy ass people, it's like you can't help but think like, oh, I know a large percentage of why they ended up here is because of this exact combination of drugs. Exactly. And but like I said, any drugs, dog. The only thing weed is like okay, it's like an yeah. open thing, you know. But any other like drugs, real drugs, if you do that shit, bro, you got to keep that shit. Under wraps, I mean, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying, oh, be, do that shit, be a closet fucking smoker or whatever, but you don't go and broadcast that shit to the world, bro. That shit ain't cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Do you think that the fact that you, um, you know, were able to do so good in school at a young age and the fact that you're just clearly like more intelligent than the average person, did that come into play with making you a better rapper definitely. right away? Because we're not really necessarily no, used to thinking that these things are like one and the same. That's definitely like because. Like, just my my level of uh, of just understanding and comprehension is like it just it definitely made me a, gives me an advantage in this rap game. Like you know what I mean? Okay, like when I'm busted, I read books that are like that, fool. You know what I mean? I read a I read a four thousand page book in like 
five days, six days. Four thousand, holy shit. Yeah, for sure. But while you're in jail, you read mm. it all day long. You know what I mean? There's like, you know what I'm saying? What books had the biggest impact on you? Hmm. I don't know. I, I can't really say that books have impacted me because real life has impacted me. You mm. know what I mean? I was impacted by real life as a kid to growing up. So like now things don't really impact me that much. They just, yeah, I read it. it I intake it has a little influence on me and then that's it. Mm. You know, they don't really like, Oh, change my life or nothing like that. You know what I mean? But, but I like historical fiction. Mm, you know? Really? Yeah. I like historical fiction a lot. Like, like reading books about Genghis Khan or, or, you know, things like that. Mm. That shit's tight. It intrigues me, you know? Yeah. Same here. I feel like that anything regarding history, like I, that's one thing with me is like, I always have to feel like I'm learning something from whatever I watch. I can't really get down with a movie or a book. If I just feel like it's just for the pleasure of watching it or enjoying it. Like I've have to feel like I'm getting something out of this. And that's one thing I get out of history is I feel like when I'm watching that, I'm kind of like studying how things play out for or how they were historical you know, figures. Just and the, shit. Just yeah. the, it trips me out how things were, you know, mm. how the world was. Like, you know, they didn't have this technology, you know, so what did they do and how did they do it? I, I like to read about shit like that. So, yeah, but like I was saying, reading those books, like reading a 4,000-page book is going to expand your vocabulary majorly, you know mm. what I mean, compared to if you're reading these little-ass books. So with the, with the wide-set vocabulary, you're going to make better songs or you're going to say smarter things. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, or not even smarter things. You're just going to make sense. I mean, you know, right. what I mean? you're going to, your songs are going to have a beginning, a middle and an end. You know, they're not just going to be saying all oh, fucking I'm from here and this and this and that. Like, nah, like the average person in our world knows about what's going on right now. They might watch podcasts or they listen to music that comes out right now. But it's like the smarter person or the, the wiser person is going to go back 20 years and listen to the music that came out before they came out so they could understand how that shit played out. They're going to read about war and read about, you know, what was going on with our country and shit in previous times because all that stuff is going to, A, make you more interesting as a person right now, and B, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be infused into your content in some way. Like, But then you also kind of run the risk of being of overdoing it where if you read a whole book about Genghis Khan you could put pieces of that into your lyrics but is it going to go over the head of your audience yeah that's the that's the you have to kind of be able to dumb okay, it down that's for where audience I, you know oh, gang that's where I, see I dumbed down a lot of my shit mm. just so that I could connect with the audience you know what I mean yeah. because like I have songs that I never recorded but that are just like not written because I don't write but they're just in my head where I just show certain homies like you know when I come when I see certain homies that I know are on that level with me, hey, check this out, fool, and I'll spit that shit for them. They'll be like, damn, that shit's sick. But why but, does it stay that way? Why does it not get released? I mean, because eventually it will. I just don't feel like it. it's not that, like, you know, it's not that popping. It's not It's not going to crack for my audience right mm. now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, because, like, the, the song, the reason why I got excited about O3 Greedo way back in the day was because he had a song called Mafia Business that was about a guy named Ray from their hood from Grape Street who died. And he made a song, and you can kind of tell it like wasn't really meant for like mainstream consumption because it's not mastered and shit. And if you listen to it on good speakers, it doesn't really sound right. But it's like that was meant to be strictly like a hood anthem just for his neighborhood. And then it kind of like he slowly became convinced that like, all right, people will fuck with this. And that was like basically his first popular song. And it's interesting that a song that he made thinking that people outside his hood would never hear it ended up being the thing that resonated with so many people and kind of took him off from there. Yeah. See, like I've been having trouble with this track. It's called Belly of the Beast. It's a but it's really it's an acapella flow, you know, but I've been having trouble trying to get it on a beat because it's like. I don't know. The original flow with no beat is like crazy, bro. It, it, like if when you listen to it and you hear me rap it from here, from me to you, it's like, damn, what the fuck? But you don't make beats, so it's hard for you to like figure out exactly how to get it's the beat that would work for it, right? It's hard for me to get it, it onto right? a beat, yeah, mm -hmm. on the hood. You know, or I try to freestyle, like a few, a couple of these uh, podcasts, I would try to freestyle it when the, you know, 
play a beat and yeah it come out all right but it, it won't be the same as if i were to hit just bust it right now for you you'll mm. be, be like what the fuck you know interesting i remember pmb rock told me that uh because he had this one song that kodak ended up being featured on that ended up being like huge for him early on and he wrote it while he was in prison and then had to like just keep singing it and repeating it over and over and over for years and years and he said that it was really popping off in the jail and shit like people really loved it in there then he finally gets out after all these years and records it and it ends up being this like huge song for him and i always think about shit like that like did did that song get better and better and better over the years as he kind of just like kept repeating it like would it have been See, as good there's if a lot, there's a lot of songs it the that first I, round there's know? a lot of songs that i want to keep doing like i i keep on re-recording on different beats you know mm. what i mean I, now that you say that i'm probably gonna keep doing it until i find the right one you know mm. and then there's this like okay when i was in juvenile hall they used to come to there's this group that used to come to our our facility called street poets mm-hmm just try to get us to open up and like talk about shit, you know what I mean? And make poetry, you know? But it's not any regular type of poetry. This is where we could sit there and cuss. We could talk about shootings. We could talk about the shit that really was going on, you know what I mean? Mm. And not get in trouble for it. So I made this poem that was like really about me. Like it was about me and my life. Like, you know what I mean? And like, I can't really make it into a song, but it's a sick ass poem. Mm. That's just dope. But shit like that, it's because of those things that I'm able that I started to take my music and really express myself, like mm. really, like you know what I mean, like my life, you know. When you make a song, do you feel like the main thing is is it mostly about the content and like what you're saying, or is it are you more concerned with like the actual rapping? Because I heard you in other interviews talk about how you actually really care about being sort of technical or doing interesting things with your verses and shit, but you don't necessarily even have the vocabulary to express what you're doing. You just, yeah. you're just doing it. And then later on you'll hear like a real lyricist type person talking about it and you'll be like, okay, yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah. yeah on the hood. I like doing that. Shit. Like mm. it's a trip. I trip out on that shit. Cause that's the shit. It's natural to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm musically inclined. I mean like, like that shit is like, just comes out of me, you know? Right. And then when I hear that, that that's actually a skill people are working at, like working on trying to get better at them, like, damn, what the fuck? Right. Who, from like a technical standpoint though, is there anybody in particular that stands out to you? You're like, that dude as a rapper is doing what I'm working on doing. I want to be like nice like that. Like that, that's the, the type of shit that I'm into. Anybody in particular stand out in terms of like the actual mm -hmm. rapping? I don't know, bro. I can't. I can't really put my finger on it because there's a bunch of different, bunch of different rappers that that have influenced me that I I would want to get better at working towards rapping a little more like them or or just ripping their skill off of them and and you know adding it onto my arsenal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But no, nah, I can't really say exactly who. But right, because you you said that for you it's important to be viewed as like a just a rapper period and that you want to be viewed in competition with black rappers and shit like that with and that you all don't, rappers you, you know? don't necessarily want to be confined to just your race yeah no nah, hell no nah. you know what i mean because it's like i feel like like i'm competition homie you know what i mean people don't know it yet because i'm not there yet but I'm competition, dog. You know, I could I could sit here and really rap. You know what I mean? Like when other rappers come, around, there's rappers that are doing numbers, but when they come right here face to face in the flesh, they don't want to bust their shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Because they're not that their shit don't sound that good unless it's in the studio with all the effects and all the tune and all that shit. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I'm a rapper, bro. I'm like I'm an MC. You know what I mean? Like if if I see if I'm walking down the street and I there's a group of people over there and they're fucking rapping. They got a cypher going. I feel the need. I have to go over there and bust. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could freestyle. Like, you, if there was a beat playing, you could just start going off the top. Off the top? Nah, not really because mm. I don't like to make mistakes. Mm. So that's why I never really worked on freestyling or, or, you know, got it. I mean, I'm sure I could, you know, but it's something you have to work on. You know what I'm saying? And I never worked on it because I don't like to make mistakes. But, I have a bunch of flows that are in my head. You know what I'm saying? I don't write. So I got a gang of flows that, that I could just hit you with at any time. Do you never write? Like, even if you happen to have a bar pop in your head, you just 
Y'all gonna write it down? It's just or, you just hope it comes up and into comes back into your brain in the studio. I have it. Mm. Like I, it's just there. Yeah. Okay. It's not going anywhere. No. Mm. No. And then like I, I could get parts of this flow and parts of. Oh, I put this bar in with this flow and then get the second verse of this flow and put it. In. I just that shit all happens in my head, bro. Mm. Yeah, because one thing I was thinking about when I was hearing you talk about how you didn't want to be confined to just being like a Chicano rapper or whatever is how realistically, if you look at all the popular rappers throughout like the last 40, 50 years, whatever, it's been like very few Mexican rappers who have really ascended to the like national superstar level. And some might even say that like pretty much nobody's None. really got to that point, None, right? Homie. I don't want to be offensive or anything, but nah, that's, nah, it, there's, there's a lot of truth see, to it, which is kind of crazy. There's people that would take that offensively. Right. I don't because I agree, homie. You know what I mean? If you, but if you're looking at the, Okay, the thing is, there's Mexicans that have gotten up there, mm. but they're in that category, homie. You know what I mean? And all the other races pretty much don't even, they're oblivious to that whole movement, that whole fucking, it's a big movement, homie. I don't knock it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I, I do not knock it. I'm not trying to talk shit or downplay it by no means, homie. I'll give it as much credit as it got coming, mm. which is a lot, dog. But, at the same time, there's a whole group of people, you know what I mean? There's this whole creed of people that are uh, totally oblivious to it. Mm -hmm. Now, how is your shit really that good if all these people are oblivious to it? Mm. You know what I mean? It's only good to your people. That's out. You know what I'm saying? And it's especially crazy when you consider, if you go to a rap concert in L.A., whether it's a, a white artist, a black artist, whatever, I mean, the, the audience is going to be like 50% Hispanic plus. Like, they're kind of like the main consumers of music. So it's kind of yeah, surprising that, I mean, there's definitely exceptions and shit. There's Mexican rappers who have popped off and got a shitload of recognition regionally. But then meanwhile, like on a national level, it hasn't really Even with the happened. Mexicans, okay, like... They they have two separate sides, you know what I mean? Because everybody has a bunch of personalities in their head, dog, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They'll be like, okay, they listen to the regular mainstream, you know what I mean, rap, and then they got their Chicano rap that they, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? They have two different, two totally separate things, dog, you know what I mean? I'm, that, I'm not trying to be stuck in that side, you know what I'm saying? I can really make music, dog. I could, mm -hmm. I could rap on totally, I could sing, you guys don't know that yet. The world don't know that yet. I could do, when it comes to music, homie, I could do it. Anything, I could do it. I'm a, I'm very musically inclined, homie. I'm an artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what makes it different for me. I'm not. You're not gonna catch me, all rapping about my hood, like just banging my hood, banging my homies. You know what I mean? Like, nah, dog. I'm making music, dog. Cause that shit only gonna take you so far. It's only gonna stay in that side. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's just. I don't. I'm not, I don't believe my music should only be in that competition, you know? Right. My shit should be kind of be in the Olympics, though, with the rest of the fucking. So I was thinking about it like a lot of people say that if it wasn't for, like when Eminem came out, if it wasn't for the fact that he got with Dr. Dre and then 50 Cent, that he would have not ever really been able to be taken seriously as a white rapper because every white rapper before Eminem basically was viewed as like a joke or whatever. And then Eminem comes into the game, shitload of talent, but also co-signed by like two of the most important black rappers. Do you feel like for a Mexican rapper to really truly pop off that they might have to sign to a black label at a certain point? It's okay, not signed to a black label, but you have to have, okay, let's keep it real, dog. Rap, hip hop and rap, it, it's a black thing. You know mm. what I mean? It's like they started this shit, dog. You know what I mean? The Chicano rap and all that shit that you guys started, they started that. I'm not going to say you guys because that's my people, you know. Mm -hmm. We started that, and now that's its own thing. But if you want to make it to MTV, BET, uh, the real music competition, the real, you know, you feel me? Mm. Yeah, you're definitely going to have to be co-signed by some blacks, you know what I mean? Definitely, you know what I mean? If the blacks fuck with your music, then it must be hard. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Straight up, dog. If, you, if only Mexicans fuck with their music then it's hard only to Mexicans. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And and like, I don't know. I But one thing I do know is my shit's hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every every prison yard I've been on, I'm the best rapper on the yard. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The blacks give it up to me. Hey, fool, that's just hard. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, every single race. You know what I'm saying? And 
the whites are like, bro, you're fucking shit sick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the, the homies are like, the homies actually get pumped up because it's like, okay, we actually have somebody where mm -hmm. they could actually rap better than the black. So then now they're like, hey, come, shoot, remember that fool that was rapping last? Bring that fool. The homie's going to tear him up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it, it gets them happy, like, that we actually have somebody who's competition, homie, compared to homies that are going to spit their flows that are like, Bro, it's hard to you, but everybody else is gonna be like, it's a low key a joke to everybody else, though. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not gonna let that shit. You know what I'm saying? So for the for the for my the people in my race that are like, oh, you're fucking fake and fucking, you know what I mean? You fucking not stay down true to yourself, true to your people. It's like nah, dog. There's people that are from my race that recognize what I'm doing, and they're like, nah, fool, you're actually taking us to the show you know right. what I mean? the competition the fucking playoffs you feel mm -hmm. me because especially nowadays there's like a lot of rappers that don't seem like they take that much pride in their actual rapping so it's like you're somebody who's that that's a big part of what you're doing and it's obvious from like every verse i heard you spit i never really heard like a lazy one it seems like you always try to show and prove man fool. like i said i'm gonna i'm gonna be the one that that is gonna take the mexicans there mm. you know what i mean but there's other artists that are doing it that are taking us there too. Like, you know what I mean? Like the Texans, the Mexicans in Texas. Yeah. That's okay. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. You know what I mean? You're actually taking us to where we're actually a threat in the competition, in this fucking, mm -hmm. in this competition, homie. You know what I mean? It's crazy because now shit is completely different than when I started doing this shit like eight or nine years ago because now even in just California you have like a whole network like a circuit of different podcasters youtubers uh you know Instagram accounts that are basically like pumping out news to the community and stuff so you could totally like blow up and become like a person who's super relevant strictly within like the Mexican part of hip hop without necessarily even ever touching a world star or academics or a say cheese or whatever. Not that like, I mean, I feel like all those platforms are down to fuck with Mexican rappers that for sure, like the same way that I am. But just the fact that there is such a community online and shit now, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. Like that, that, that whole system has evolved to be able to like help out the careers yeah, of people from that see, community. Okay, okay. But see, like you said, okay. In the Mexican community, you can get to the top of the Mexican community. And then if you get the recognition mm -hmm. from the, from the whole rest of the races, you know what I mean? The music community. Mm -hmm. If you, then if they get you that, recognition and they put you on the spot are you gonna be ready mm. you know what i mean are, are you gonna be ready to rap your best song and are they gonna fuck with it right you know what i mean you can you might be the top of the fucking chicano rap but when it comes down to the mainstream or you know the rest of the the california underground rap are you gonna be able to rap with that with, and be taken serious mm. you know what i'm saying because in the food community world jenny 69 is like taylor swift but in order for her to actually become like a big national sensation or whatever, it's going to take her basically like branching out and being able to do all these more like mainstream things. But it is also dope that I'm sure she makes a good look uh, living getting booked for shows versus whatever the fuck it is all kind of like within this like one community that's evolved. You know? See, and then another thing is like in the in the regular music community, they're going to take your music how it is mm. you know what i'm saying they're gonna take it how it is and, and judge it like that you know what i mean in the chicano rap community you have to fit a certain like a certain outfit you know what i mean you have to be a certain st style like you have to rap a certain way or else if not you're copying these people or copying that people mm. you know what i mean you can't say this you can't say that you know what i mean like nah dog i i, I rap the way i rap and i say what i say i mean if you don't like it don't listen you know mm. what I'm saying? Straight up. Definitely. What about somebody like OGZ who kind of like... He's hard. He, yeah, he's a dope-ass rapper and it's fully accepted by the, the black rappers in that whole world because he like came up with around Draco, Greedo, there's black dudes in Shoreline Mafia. Yeah. So I feel like too, a lot of people, they don't even really like think of him in the same category because he just sort of like came into his own. Exactly. He, he ain't no Chicano rapper. You know what I mean? He's not even in the, that... You know what I mean? Mm. That's what, where I'm trying. But see, me, they automatically put me over there because I'm a Sureño. You know mm. what I mean? But the, there's homies, Sureños, that are like, full. 
they see me what I'm doing, they're like, that's right, fool. You know what I'm saying? Because we listen to Nipsey, the game, YG. We all of us bump that shit, dog. You know, mm. so for a Mexican to be able to rap like that is like, that's right, dog. Right. You know what I mean? The other the, there's motherfuckers that hate. They're like, oh, you're a Mexican. You shouldn't be saying nigga. Like, well, nigga, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, st- you act like you guys like we don't say this shit. You know what mm. I mean? It's it's a regular thing, dog. We're in California. We're gang banging, homie. You know what I mean? Like. It's the motherfuckers that are all super Sureño Alta. Oh, we don't see that. It's that we fucking, we're like, it's those motherfuckers that get all the Mexican culture all blasted all over them, think they're all hard. First ones to lock it up. Mm. You see, uh, like, come on, dog. You know what I mean? Just be yourself. Be regular, homie. You know what I mean? But there is solid motherfuckers that are into all that Mexican culture that don't play that shit. You know what I mean? Mm. And I, m- nothing but respect to them, homie. You know what I mean? But. I'm going to make my music, dog, and it's going to go places. Mm, definitely. So w- from your perspective, like, what do you need to do to take your shit to the next level? Because I feel like you've, you've, your star has been rising significantly over the past month or two. I think I should just keep doing what I'm doing. Mm. Honestly, I'm on the right track. Everything that I'm doing, I'm okay. If you're constantly moving in this direction, you're going to get to the top regardless one day. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not going to change up my program or, or try to fit into what people want me to say or do just so I can go up faster. Nah, you know what I mean? I, I'll be patient. You feel me? I feel like I'm doing exactly right. I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Just got to, like, keep engineering looks for you to sort of, like, keep getting more and more eyeballs on you. But, yeah. like, I feel like you're the kind of person that you can't listen to more than a song or two without even the most basic rap fan being like all right yeah like he's rapping really fucking good like he's way yeah. better than the average dude there's so there's nobody if if somebody's saying that I'm garbage they they're hating homie mm-hmm. you can't you can't you can't you can't knock my shit bro you can't my shit's hard yeah straight up no denying it for sure so but from your perspective like are you working on an album or are you just like oh yeah see there's a couple of things that are going to be coming out that you know, I got this mixtape coming out, probably another one after that, and then the album. But yeah, I signed for an album. That's just going to be coming out soon. Everything's pretty much done, dog. Mm. It's all done. It's just a matter of how the label wants to go about marketing and dropping and all that shit, you know? For sure. Who'd you sign to? I signed to Now Forever. Okay. It's a, a, our Santa Ana music group. Okay. They're under Alamo. Oh, really? Yeah. And so you're pretty stoked on that so far as I've been kind of, because you, you, like when you were talking about your manager and shit, you said that you really like the, the way that you're able to sort of just focus on the rapping and he kind of gets you the business deals and the Hell shows yeah. and all that kind of shit, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. I just do my thing, dog. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. I could definitely see you being, you know, one of the, the leaders in this world as it keeps going. But see, then, I, then it, okay, I don't want to be stuck in that Chicano rap category, mm. but then... When I hear shit like like when Lefty's like, oh, I'm the best Chicano rapper. This and it makes you want to stand on your Then shit. I'm like, nah, you got me <laughs> fucked up, fool, you know? Mm. Straight up. Definitely. I feel like the one thing I would say, though, is that you and him, without even being necessarily super cool, can help each other like crazy because the fans really will gravitate towards that sense of competition. But I think you guys are also in a, a situation where you don't necessarily have to make it some crazy, violent type vibe. It could just be you guys both getting on a song. Like, See, not, just getting on a song is going to make everybody stop and listen and, and pay attention. Yeah, hell yeah. You know? And I'm I'm all for that. But then, and then just when I'm like, you know what, fuck that. I'm going to get on, I'm going to hit that foot. We're going to get on a track. Then the next day I see that fool on a podcast like, oh, celebrity boxing, who would you fight with? <laughs> Rowdy Rack's like, what? I'll beat you up, homie. <laughs> this motherfucker, you know what I mean? Yeah. But but at the same time, I know that fool, he gets on podcasts and just says like mm. all kinds of shit on me. So it's just like, ah, whatever, dog, you know? Yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, I think everybody out there should definitely tune in because I feel like you're definitely probably one of the biggest talents coming out of Southern California yeah. right now, man. I got uh, they should just, man just dropped a couple singles. I got that lifestyle with with the homie Jamori. Mm. That shit's hot. I'm about to drop another single with G Perico. Oh, that's dope. that shit's gonna be hard. How'd you tap in with him? Uh, through my managers and shit. That they, they actually asked me like, who would you want to work with? You know, if you ha- could pick anybody, you know. Mm. And I was like, man, it sucks that Nip passed away because. Mm. Definitely was looking forward to trying to get on the track with him, you know what I mean? Because he spits that real shit like I do, I mean, mm-hmm. you know? 
but if I had to pick right now, I'd probably pick G Perico because that's who I bump. Like I bump music that I can relate to. You know what I mean? Even though he's a crip and I'm a Southsider, he's talking about shit that I'm into. You know what I mean? Mm. So boom, within two weeks, that shit was done. They go, what? Say less. They got it. They made it happen for me. And I was just like, hell yeah. Like really excited about it. Jumped on the track, did my thing. He did his thing. That shit's hard. You know, that shit's going to be coming out. It's just going to be hard. I got a bunch of the, uh, other features coming up. We're going to try to lock in Sugar Free. I'm going to try to get oh, a couple shit. of other West Coast legends to, to really fuck with me. You know what I mean? Because I could rap with them. I could hang. You know what I mean? That's dope. Yeah, because uh, G Perico, I think that he's like the first L.A. street rapper that I ever interviewed, which is, is kind of right? crazy. Yeah, like 2017 or something like that. Like, it was just, that's kind of wild. That fool's hard. Like, I fuck with that fool's music. But he's got that West Coast, that gangster shit, fool. That's what I'm spitting. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But, I mean, honestly, it's kind of, in terms of him getting as big as he could possibly get, it's kind of like a similar challenge with you. It's like you could be a dope West Coast rapper, but how do you kind of rise above that and pop outside of that little world? You See, know? When I met him, when we did the video, he pulled up to my spot. Nothing but my homies, my family. You know what I mean? Deep. He pulled up by himself. Mm. Hopped out, chilled. Even after the video, still kicked it with us right there like for a cool minute. You know what I mean? It's just real motherfuckers, dog. If you're a real motherfucker, Grove, if you're a real nigga and you're really about what you're about, you don't have nothing to prove to nobody. You don't got to come and act like, oh, fucking, you know what I mean? You got to act all super hard or fucking, you know, say exactly where you're from or so. You ain't got to be like that, dog. Mm. Motherfuckers know where you're from. You got it blasted all over you. You know (laughs) know what I'm saying? Like, just be you. You know what I mean? And motherfuckers click like that. You know what I mean? So when I was chopping it up with him, like, What's up? How long you been rapping, fool? He's like, I've been rapping for like 20-something years. Mm. Like, what? Like, what? For real? He's like, yeah. I'm like, man, I wouldn't even have thought because he just started blowing up like, what, seven, eight years? I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? But That's what I was thinking. I'm like, if I interviewed him seven years ago, that means it took him 13 years of grinding before he even, I mean, probably did interviews before that. But exactly. like, even got Which to that is, level. But you know? see, the thing is, what I respect about him is that he stayed true to himself, homie. He didn't go try to do some dumb shit on Instagram so he could blow up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He just grinded and kept his kept his shit, you know, focused on his music, making his shit quality music. And eventually he got to where he's popping. You know what I mean? He did that shit the right way, and I, and I fuck with that. That's yeah. why That's why even though, like, you know, there's certain ones with my homies, like, fool, you need to go fucking diss that fool lefty and fucking so you can start blowing. Nah, fool, fuck that, dog. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm... As long as you're moving like this, you're going in the right direction, homie. You know what right. I mean? And once I, if I start going downwards, then I'm going to be like, okay, what do I got to do to, you know, what do I got to change? Or what? Right now, I'm moving upwards. I, I feel no uh, need to change anything. You know what I mean? Why change up my program if I'm going in the right direction? No, I respect you standing on that shit and not just wanting to be for clout or whatever. Because I did an interview with this uh, this dude, Rainwater, who was like Mo3's manager from Dallas. And he mentioned to me, and it kind of fucked me up because I've been thinking about it ever since. But he mentioned that when you look at what cities are considered popping music-wise in America on some like street rap shit, it's almost exclusively the cities that have a bunch of killing and they have big, high-profile beefs between rappers, those are basically the cities that you would acknowledge are, like, popping or they, like, get attention and shit yeah. like that. Like, beefing is the easiest possible way for you to get attention because it just happens naturally. You know, like, like literally anyone could make a song, any street rapper, whatever, could make a song about some guy who died on the other side of town, and it doesn't matter if you or your homies had anything to do with it, but if you make a song saying, ha ha, your homie got killed on this side of town, your video is going to do like 10 to 100 times as many views as all your other videos. Not you, but yeah, just anybody. Yeah, that's crazy, yeah, I know. And that's fucked up, and that's like, I really respect anybody who will have that opportunity right in front of them, where you know that if you drop the lefty diss track tomorrow, it'll probably be your biggest song. But where does that push you? Where is that? What, what does that say about the long-term direction of your career? And what does that say about me if we're not beefing like that? Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're not beefing like that, it's like, that's fake, homie. That one thing about me, dog, I don't give a fuck what none of the comments say. Or, you know, I, I, like, oh, he's a fake Sureño because he says, nigga, homie, motherfuckers know me, dog. I'm a real motherfucker, dog. I, I got four prison terms under my belt. It's nothing to brag about. It's just... Part of my lifestyle, homie. Part of the life that I've lived. Part of the life that I still that I'm still living, even though I'm trying to do something different. It's just part of my life, homie. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And 
if I ain't beefing it with you, what the fuck I look like doing a diss track? You know what I mean? That's why when when they brought up that celebrity boxing shit, it's like, okay, first of all, we don't, I don't, we don't do that shit, homie, for everybody to see. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If if we got an issue with, or you know, we need to get something out of the way, we're gonna go handle that shit. Nobody's gonna be allowed to watch or fucking mm-hmm. record or nothing. Nah, homie, we don't get down like that. That's not the that's not the way we get down straight up. You know what I mean? So it's like. It kind of surprised me when he's all like, oh, Rowdy Racks or Whack 100. I'm like, what? Like, what the fuck you mean, homie? You know what I mean? But and then it's like, I can't just, oh, fight you just for a celebrity boxing match. Like, if, we, if we're going to fight, if we have an issue, nigga, it's going to be, t- like, you can't just rap beef with me. Mm. Somebody diss me, it's going to be on a crack and fool. You know what I mean? Like, And then at another on another tip, it's like, you, man, bro, nobody wants, fools don't want to beef it with me, dog. Mm. Straight up, this shit gonna get real. You know what I mean? And, and even it, if it's rapping, like I'll tear you apart on the mic, homie. Mm. <laughs> like, like if I make a diss track about somebody, I'm on a clown on that shit. Mm. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like Lefty, when I went and listened to his music, I was impressed because I feel like he's somebody who, like, realistically, he would be viral as fuck, even if the music was ass. But I feel like if he's gonna do battle with you, he's really gonna have to bring his A game because you're you're really spitting. Yeah, no. and he's he's only been out for a little while. I feel like you would definitely probably have to bring a different level of rapping out of him. Nah, yeah, I slaughter him. Huh? <laughs> nah, but but I would like man if if circumstances were different, I wouldn't mind. I would actually enjoy being in the booth with that fool and, and you know helping him fucking you know because when I'm in the booth with other artists, even other artists help me. Like you know we we just level we're vibing. You know what I mean? He's spitting this, and I'm telling him, you should say it like this, or mm. just, you know what I mean? Like, I definitely could, could, we could both improve on a lot of shit, you know what I mean, together. If you guys could agree to basically, like, do battle on a song together, even if you're not together, even if you just mail him the verse or whatever, and, like, there's somebody in between, like, the producer or whoever who could kind of, like, help put it together, that would be the illest shit. That would be so good for rap in general, slash, like, your side of the, the rap world. Like, that would be... I feel like that would definitely be like one of the best things that could happen. So maybe I'll maybe I'll try to help orchestrate it a little bit. Yeah. I'm probably not the person, but you know, anything I could do. That's why right. people would love it. to hear that. Yeah, but yeah, I definitely think that you're you're going places, man. You're definitely like the people are going to see this. Like they're definitely going to be like, oh yeah, I gotta fuck with this dude. I gotta check his music out because you're you're super talented. I appreciate that, dog. I really do. I appreciate that. I remember. Uh, I think Lush, Lush was telling me like, yeah, Adam's fucking with you, fool. <laughs> really? Because uh, cause Lush fucks with me. You know what I mean? A yeah, lot yeah. of people who hear my music end up fucking with me. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? As a person. Like, right. You know what I mean? It is what it is, dog. Like, I spit, I spit some real shit. Don't get me wrong. I jump on tracks where I'm just bullshitting, partying, and fucking whatever, you know, whatnot. But I try to keep it uh, intelligent, you mm-hmm. know, comprehensible at least. Definitely. I like it, man. All right, Rowdy Rex, appreciate you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you having Everybody me, Everybody tap in. My man's catalog going crazy. Uh, no Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out yeah. on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, and Instagram. Like, comment, subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. Boom.